anyway, I went to the stage door to go, uh, you know, shake his hand and meet him. And, and uh, I waited for him to come out and uh, got to meet all kinds of other actors that were, were in it. And um, uh, so Bill Hutt came out. And I went right up to him and I said, my name's Jacob James. I'm in high school right now, but one day I'm gonna work here and we're gonna become really good friends. And he was like, oh, you think so, eh? And then he got into his old uh, uh, white caddy and, and drove off. And then uh, my drama teacher came and collected me and, and got me on the bus. The Theatre Curation Project was born in the spirit of stewardship over the art, craft, and history of the theatre. Its purpose is to curate these stories of our mentors and what they passed on to us to be a resource for future generations. Its goal is to preserve these stories and the lessons within them from being lost forever. Hello. My name is Jacob James. I'm an actor, a director, and a drama professor, and I happen to be the creator of this YouTube channel, The Theatre Curation Project. I figured now as we're approaching our 50th episode of the Mentor Stories series, uh, that it would be uh, high time that I share one of my mentor stories for the series. I've been blessed and deeply, deeply grateful to have had some very, very amazing mentors. Um, and I'll do videos, uh, episodes of, of, uh, of some of the things I've learned from them in the future. Um, but today I'm going to talk about um, someone who uh, was pretty much my idol uh, as I grew up. Uh, as a high school student uh, doing community theater in Kingston, Ontario, uh, William Hutt. For those of you who don't know who William Hutt is, uh, I like to refer to him as kind of the Gandalf of the Stratford Festival. He was one of the original company members um, and continued all the way through until uh, he passed away some years ago. Uh, he had done many, many productions of the Tempest playing the role of Prospero. And I happened to be his final aerial uh, at the Stratford Festival in, in uh, a production um, directed by Richard Monette, who happened to be uh, one of my other mentors at the time. As a high school student uh, growing up in Kingston, I used to, my favorite thing was going on the field trips to the Stratford Festival uh, with my wonderful, uh, drama teacher at KCVI, Ian Malcolm. Um, and I would go see these shows and I was that kid that instead of going to the school bus after the show like I was supposed to, I'd sneak around to the stage door to go uh, meet the actors and get autographs. And um, there was one uh, particular performance and it happened to be um, the Tempest that I'd seen uh, at the Stratford Festival. It was the production previous to the one that I did where Michael Terrio played Ariel. And I have to say, before I tell you about what I said to Bill at the stage door, um, I swear to God, uh, when he was doing the epilogue, um, uh, I was sitting just above the stage right vom. And I swear, I swear to God, uh, right at the very end, if you're me, you're me, he went like this, he's like, he's like, let your indulgence set me free. And then blackout. And I'm like, he looked, he looked right at me when he said the last lines of the play. Anyway, so, uh, so anyway, I went to the stage door to go, uh, you know, shake his hand and meet him. And, and uh, I waited for him to come out and uh, got to meet all kinds of other actors that were, were in it. And um, uh, so Bill Hutt came out and I went right up to him and I said, my name's Jacob James. I'm in high school right now, but one day I'm gonna work here and we're gonna become really good friends. And he was like, oh, you think so, eh? And then he got into his old uh, uh, white caddy and, and drove off. And then uh, my drama teacher came and collected me and, and got me on the bus. Um, 
Anyway, uh, cut to uh, after I went to the National Theatre School, I graduated, I got to go right to Stratford and then um, I did the conservatory at, at right, right out of my, you know, at the beginning of my second season and uh, got to do some amazing things. But then I think it was my, <clears throat> it's a bit of a blur, it was six years in a row, but it, uh, I think it was my, my fourth season uh, that I, that I, I got to play, um, got to play Ariel and uh, after the very, very first reading, well, actually I should, I'll tell you this. So, so, um, there's a point, um, at the beginning, the first scene with Ariel and Prospero where, uh, Prospero's like, report to me everything you did on the ship over there. And I, and, and I go, go off on the whole description of what happened and with the expectation of now you're going to let me be free, right? That's where he's going to let Ariel be free. And, uh, uh, Bill's line is, but there's more work. And my response is, is there more toil? And so right before the very first read through, um, Richard Manette had me come to his office and he's like, when you get to the point where you say, is there more toil? I want you to, I want you to scare the whole room. I want you to stand up, slam on the table. Is there more toil? And, uh, um, and I'm like, what are you talking about? I mean, like, I mean, this is my first read through with William Hutt. I'm, and, uh, um, he's like, just do it. And so of course I, I, I did it and it got to that point and I did it. Is there more toil? And not knowing why Richard wanted me to do this. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, Bill takes this long pause. Everybody in the room kind of stops. And then of course, Bill's response is, how now, moody? And of course the whole room up or up something became very clear to me. Okay, that's, that's what that was about. Anyway, so we finished the first reading. I'm uh, walking Bill to his his white caddy in the parking lot, and uh, and that's when I said, you know, we've uh, we've met before. He's like, oh really? And I said, yeah. When I was in a high school, I came to the stage door and I said, I'm Jacob James. I'm in high school right now, but when I'm going to work here, we're going to become really good friends. And uh, and he and he looks at me, he goes, well, you're here. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, whether we become good friends remains to be seen. And then he got in his caddy and drove away. And I was like, oh my God, we did. We ended, we ended up becoming good friends. We would drink martinis on his, on his porch. Um, but the lesson, one of the major lessons, and the big, big lesson that Bill Hutt taught me during that production of The Tempest, um, uh, it, this is it, what I would like to share with you. So it was uh, early in the run. We, we'd finished previews, we'd opened. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know, the, the, the play opens with the big shipwreck, and then we have the quiet scene between Prospero and Miranda, played by the lovely Adrian Gould in this production. And um, then the Ariel Prospero scene, where they're alone on stage. Man. And so I... Um, I would sit on the stairs of the, um, the backstage stairs of the entrance to the balcony of the festival stage at Stratford. And I'd listen to the scene and, uh, and I'm there with like the feathers on my fingers and my whole unitard and in the outfit and the makeup and, and, and I'd sit there and I would just freak myself out. I would go, oh my God, all these people have come to see Bill Hutt, the great Bill Hutt do his final Prospero, you know, his, 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 his swan song show and everything. And I'm this little punk who's about to go out there with him and do shared verse and be alone on stage with him. And, uh, I, I'd psych myself out so much to the point where, where, where I was just in absolute doubt when, when I would come on stage. So it, it got to the point where I, I'm like, okay, I got to talk to Bill about this. So there's a, um, a chunk of time where uh, Trinculo and Caliban and Stefano were doing their thing and, and where we've got, we both got time off stage. So I gathered up my courage. I went to uh, his dressing room and uh, knocked on the door. He opened the door and he sit there, you know, for such a giant, such a godlike person, y you know, I opened the door and he's just quietly kind of sitting there and he looked like an old man. And I said, Bill, can I come in? I, I have to talk to you about something. And he said, yes, yes, please. And so I sat down and I explained it to him. I said, I'm freaking myself out because, you know, I, I, I don't feel worthy. I'm, I, I feel scared that, that, that uh, I'm not, uh, you know, qualified for this. And, you know, and, and, uh, um, and uh, he listened to me patiently, you know, nodding and, and heard me out. And then he just said, uh, who's the audience? And I said, uh, what, 
what do you mean? And he goes, who's the audience? And again, he just let me sit there and think about it. I was like, I don't, I don't know if I understand what, what you mean. And he said, um, are they a bunch of people who are waiting for you to come out on stage so they can judge whether you're a good or a bad actor? And I sort of saw, I sat there for a second. I, the penny started to begin to drop. And then he said, he said, or is it your long lost friend you haven't seen in 20 years? Or is it your lover? He says, or is it your grandfather that you're always talking about that you miss so much? And again, I, I, I sort of sat there just kind of processing. And he said, he said, it's up to you. They're out there waiting to find out what your relationship is. And so uh, the next day, well, probably immediately, I, I began to put it into practice. But when, when I got back to that entrance and that scene the next day, I just made the specific choice that, that all these people in the audience, they're my grandpa, who, loves me, who loved me unconditionally and was the best person I've ever known in my life, kindest man I've ever met. Um, and, uh, and I just made the audience my grandpa. And so when I came out, it felt like this giant, and the festival stage, uh, for those of you who, 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 who don't know, it's, it's a, a, a thrust stage. And so there's, um, it feels like genuinely like a, like a big hug of energy from the audience. And I just walked out and did that entrance, all hail great master, grave sir, hail, blah, 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 being hugged by my grandpa. And, um, and everything was fine. Everything was, 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 was totally fine. And uh, so that's, that's the big, one of the big lessons that Bill passed on to me was that, you know, by default, uh, in our fear, in our anxiety, sometimes we might be imagining that the audience is a group of people out there waiting for us to judge whether we're uh, a good or a bad actor. Um, and by default, when we go out there, um, we're going to be disconnected from our scene partner. We're not going to be listening. We're not going to be um, playing our circumstances. Uh, and the answer uh, is to make a specific choice about who the audience is um, and make it someone that trusts you. I think that was what he said in the very end. He's like, he's like in the end... Uh, are they a group of people that trust you or don't trust you? And so it's making that active choice that I'm walking out into a room where it's filled with people that not only trust me, but that love me and want me to succeed. Oh, I, I miss Bill. Uh, this is part of the reason I created the Theater Curation Project, you know, was that uh, my mentors, Val Robertson, Richard Manette, Bill Hutt, Brian Bedford, many, many others, um, are gone. We've lost them. Uh, and I wish I could talk to them. Uh, I wish I could ask them questions, but I can't. And so I thought, you know what? Someone's got to start collecting these stories, collecting these these beautiful pieces of, of, of advice and these, these theater lessons. Because again, as, as Richard Monette, my other mentor, used to always say to me, uh, theater is an oral tradition. If it's not passed on from generation to generation, bits of it will get lost. And um, I will never know what's lost. So um, I'm deeply grateful for having had the experience of playing Ariel opposite William Hutt. I'm, I continue to put into practice and to teach um, and pass on to my students and to anyone who is experiencing that similar kind of doubt, the advice that Bill gave me. Um, and uh, I hope you're enjoying this series. There's, there's so much more to come. Uh, thank you for listening to my story. And thank you for supporting the Theatre Curation Project. Uh, if you haven't subscribed uh, already, please do, uh, because it helps 
uh, the YouTube algorithm get uh, these theater stories and these lessons to um, the global theater community. Um, yes, so that's my story about uh, William Hutt.